Let's make brown butter rice crispy treats to explore the magic that is browning butter. If you've never had brown butter before, get ready, it's so good and you can use it in just about anything. So let's talk about how to brown butter. Place a stick in a pot and then put it over medium heat. Watch what happens as heat is added to the butter. Closely observe and use all of your senses. It may seem silly because you probably know what's gonna happen, the butter is going to melt, but try to take this seemingly simple process and overanalyze it. What's really going on? How big are the bubbles? What's the speed of them? What do you smell and how does it change over time? Once the butter is fully melted, turn down the heat just a little bit so the butter doesn't spatter too much and you can make sure that you're not burning the butter because it can go from brown to burn pretty quickly and based on our experience having taught a lot of students how to brown butter, the chances of you burning it on your first time is uh, pretty high. But no worries, you can just grab another stick and try again and that second time you'll probably watch a lot more closely. The longer the butter is heated, the browner and darker it will get. Once it looks like this, remove it from the heat, and you can use this brown butter for anything, pasta, popcorn, roasted veggies, but we're going to talk about Rice crispy Treats because they're simple and you can really see the brown butter. Brown the butter the same exact way, and you can do a larger pot so you can add the marshmallows directly to the pot, or you can also just do it in a bigger bowl at the end, but if you're going to add the marshmallows in, do a bigger pot because otherwise you're gonna end up like this. This is our first trial, and we were too stubborn to change it, so learn from us and get a bigger pot. It actually will take a little bit longer than you think to mix the marshmallows and butter, but eventually they'll look like one mixture. And you'll be able to see those beautiful brown specks from the brown butter, which are essentially brown milk solids, which I know don't sound delicious, but trust us, they are. They're full of flavor and they're swimming in that pool of melted gooey marshmallow. Once that's all melted and combined, you can either pour the Rice Krispies directly into the pot if it's big enough, or pour all into a larger bowl and then mix in your Rice Krispies. Stir until the Rice Krispies are completely coated in that marshmallowy goodness before pouring it into your pan, which by the way, you wanna make sure you line with parchment paper as well as oil so it doesn't stick. Pour it all directly into the pan and then let it cool just a little bit before cutting it and eating it. To explore the science behind this, we're going to focus in on the physical and chemical changes, specifically with the butter. As we add heat to the butter, we first notice physical changes, and in fact, two phase changes. First, the butter changes state from solid to liquid as it melts, and then we also see a phase change as we see all those bubbles. The water in the butter begins to boil off as we reach water's boiling point, which is 100 degrees Celsius. Might seem weird that there's water in your butter, but actually most butters are made up of about 15% water. The exact amount depends on the butter type. As we continue to add heat to the butter above 100 degrees Celsius, we start to see chemical changes occur. We see a change in color, and we notice differences in aromas and smell. Two big indicators of a chemical reaction. The chemical reaction that's occurring right here at 120 degrees Celsius, to be exact, is one that pops up everywhere in cooking. Basically, any time a food browns due to roasting, sauteing, baking, it's happening. And it's called the Maillard reaction. We personally think brown butter is the best way to showcase this reaction because we can use all of our senses to see how this chemical reaction changes substances and creates flavor. Just look at the difference between brown butter and melted butter. In addition to heat, we need sugars and proteins in order for this reaction to occur. And these are found in lots of things, from bread to meat to vegetables. In butter, we find those sugars in the proteins and milk solids, which only make up about one to 2% of the butter, but it's enough to make a difference for the chemical reaction to occur. Even though the Maillard reaction is one of the most common reactions in cooking, we still haven't actually uncovered everything there is to know about it. And that's because it's really complex. And it's not just one reaction, but a chain of multiple reactions. We start by breaking down the sugars and proteins into their smaller parts, their building blocks, glucose for sugar and amino acids for proteins. And once we reach 120 degrees Celsius, these molecules go through a chain of multiple chemical reactions where bonds are broken, atoms mix and mingle, and new molecules with new combinations and shapes are created. And eventually in that complex reaction, we get flavor. No, seriously, the products are flavor molecules. So what's a flavor molecule? Let's take a look. These are just a small sample of simplified flavor molecules because guess what? There are thousands of flavor molecules that exist and the coolest part is that we haven't even yet discovered them all. So instead of getting overwhelmed, let's look at the array of molecules and just see what atoms are popping up again and again. 
It's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. And that's due to the law of conservation of matter. What goes in must come out. Okay, that's not exactly how the science textbook will state it, but that's the gist. So if we go back to our proteins and sugars, what we started with in the chemical reaction and look at their molecular structure and what atoms are in those, we're going to see the same exact atoms. Hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen, although nitrogen is only found in amino acids and not glucose. One of the ways we tinkered and explored with the brown butter itself was trying out different pans to see if different materials and surface areas affected how the butter browned, and it definitely did. We found the stainless steel pan worked best and was most consistent for us. You can also play around with the level of heat you're using to melt the butter, try different methods, like we've actually done it in the microwave and surprisingly it did work, and play around with the amount of time you're using to melt the butter and brown it. You can also try out different types of butter. European butters tend to have more fat and less water than American or AA butters. Or you can even try out vegan butter, which is what we did. And as you can probably guess, the vegan butter did brown, but in a really different way because it doesn't have those same milk solids, those sugars and proteins unique to milk, and those are key to browning butter. You can see here the texture is totally different. For the Rice Krispie treats themselves, the easiest way to tinker with it is playing around with what else you might add instead of Rice Krispies. We also added in pretzels and potato chips for a nice salty component, and it was delicious. Highly recommend. Let us know how you tinker with this and like and subscribe for more videos.